I want to thank you all very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, it's always nice to come up into this area of, the, uh, of North Carolina. And it's, it's very nice to come up here. I have a daughter of the Lagoon at Appalachian State, so I'm going to be running over there tonight to spend a little time with her. Well, we're going to talk today uh, about Agenda 21. Hopefully all of the electronics are working. We actually have sound with the slide. For some reason, it's not working, but we'll do with that a couple of times. Basically, if you look at this slide, this is all I should really need to have to tell you. But Agenda 21 is the United Nations plan to steal our private property rights and ultimately our freedom. We know the right to own private property that cannot be arbitrarily confiscated by the government is the source of our freedom. Our founders, especially Thomas Jefferson, understood that a person's property consisted not only of his land and of his home, but also the work of his hands, the inventions of his brain, and ultimately, his life itself. Protection for private property rights is enshrined in our Constitution. It finds its primary source in the Ten Commandments, the prohibitions against envy, theft, bearing false witness, and murder, deal directly with the protection of this most important natural law rights. From the dawn of human civilization, groups of men have sought to rule over others. And the result is always the same. It's a struggle to prevent tyrants from eliminating our individual freedom. Right now, the front line in this battle in our country is the United Nations Agenda 20. Agenda 21, with its concept of sustainable development, formally began at the UN's Conference of Rio in 1992. To save Mother Earth from a promised environmental catastrophe, sustainable development severely restricts the use of all Earth's resources by human beings in a system of biodiversity in which all living and non-living components of our planet's ecosystem are of equal value. It is a goal that is meant to sound noble and impossible to oppose. But in spite of the flowery language and the lofty promises of a better tomorrow, it is all a sadistic hoax. The true intention of the proponents of Agenda 21 is to create a socialist, redistributive, one-world government run by the self-appointed elitists and shielded by the banner of the United Nations. A direct attack on private property rights was the very first UN initiative after the Conference of Rio in 1992. In September of 94, proponents of Agenda 21 attempted to get the UN Biodiversity Treaty uh, ratified by the US Senate. This treaty proclaimed that human life is of no greater value than animal or plant life, and further, it set aside over 50% of the U.S. mainland for human-free zones and buffer zones with limited human activity, leaving only tiny, isolated islands of land, the pale green areas on this map, which are called human occupation zones. Fortunately, K. Bailey Hutchinson prevented ratification of the treaty by showing where is it? this map. Okay, but unfortunately, using environmental acts and regulations such as the Endangered Species Act and regulations such as Clean Air and Clean Water Acts, the federal government already owns over 40% of the land in the United States. to be the supreme ruler of earth, the lord of all mankind, what aspects of human society would you need to control? Well, first of all, you need to control private property. You need to control energy, 
food and water, education of our youth, individual privacy, health care, personal mobility, and the use of deadly force. Agenda 21 sees total control on a global scale over every single one of those eight items. This is the biodiversity map that I was showing you originally. Okay, this is the one that K. Bailey Hutchinson uh, prevented from being ratified. Unfortunately, even though this treaty was not ratified, Many aspects of these treaties, of this treaty, are already in place because of executive orders and because of land use regulations. Also, using the environmental acts and regulations such as the Endangered Species Act, Clean Air and Clean Water Acts, the federal government already owns over 40% of the land in the United States. So here is how it works. First of all, a species is designated as endangered, and then its habitat is identified. Once the habitat is identified, a buffer zone is created around it. And that buffer zone is then used to confiscate the lands of human beings and restrict their activities. Property owners are forced off the land by onerous usage regulations, excessive taxation, arbitrary zoning laws, eminent domain abuse, and outright condemnation. Let's give you some examples. The Central Valley region in California is one of the most fertile and productive farm regions in the United States. But pumps bringing essential water irrigation for the crops in the Central Valley have been shut off by court order to protect this small minnow, the Delta Snow. Oil production in West Texas is now threatened by attempts to declare the sand dune lizard an endangered species. Environmental observers went out to what they considered would possibly be the, the habitat of this lizard. They didn't know for sure, but they went out there and they looked for one hour. In one hour, they saw no lizards. So they decided this beast was endangered. And now they're trying to get oil production stopped in that area. So, a two-inch long fish could turn the Central Valley into a dust bowl, and a three-inch long lizard could halt all oil production in West Texas, all thanks to the Endangered Species Act. The goal, let me be clear, is to eliminate all private property rights using eminent domain abuse, forced annexation, building permits with arbitrary and meaningless land restrictions, an unconstitutional search and seizure to enforce unenforceable laws. One of the most egregious examples of this is occurring in Antelope Valley, California, where Los Angeles County is requiring current landowners, many of whom have lived there for decades, to bring their dwellings up to current building codes or face eviction and loss of their property. Reed Noss, who is the co-author of the Wildlands Project, clearly states its goals. The collective needs of non-human species must take precedence over the needs and desires of humans. On the very first Earth Day in 1978, the scientific elite warned us that global cooling in a new ice age was a promise. When the Earth's climate did not cooperate, their new crisis was global warming. Initially, their data clearly blamed carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels. Later, it was revealed that the results were deliberately falsified to prove their politically correct agenda. We all know that energy is essential for commerce and the maintenance of our human lifestyle. All life and energy processes on Earth are based on the carbon molecule. Animals take in oxygen, give off carbon dioxide, Plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. And all living things use carbon-based molecules for food and for energy production. Regulations that disregard this simple fact, such as designating carbon dioxide as a poison, are primarily designed to decrease energy available for transportation and industrial growth, and ultimately to restrict human activity. 
these rising energy costs with eventual shortages and rationing of fuel will adversely affect every aspect of human life. Food, mobility, health care, recreation, and our individual freedom. And these are all the goals of Agenda 21. But a fair share means rationing for us. Except, of course, not for the ruling elite. Socialism is for the people, not for the socialists. Using every agency at its disposal, the federal government is taking control of the production and consumption of food. Their tool is burdensome regulations that favor large commercial farm conglomerates like Monsanto. Small farm corporations and family farms cannot afford the staff that is necessary to comply. More often than not, the rules serve no real purpose other than justifying the bureaucrats' jobs. This is the essence of the public-private partnership that's part of Agenda 21. The government writes rules that favor big corporations, who then return the favor by supporting the big government programs and, of course, profiting from them. The FDA, FDA and other agencies make rules for food content, restaurant menus, homemade school lunches, and all to control the type and amount of food available for human consumption. Every dictator from the beginning of time understands that indoctrination of children through government schools is insurance against a future rebellion. Like the Hitler youngmen of the 1930s, our youngsters are being taught to parrot the slogans of one world government and environmental extremism instead of acquiring the education and tools necessary to compete in the future world. We have also seen an unprecedented attack on privacy. The RICO Act, the Patriot Act, the Warner Act, NDA, the Expatriation Act, and most recently the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order, which Obama signed on Friday night, March 16th. It gives the federal government the authority to conscript all persons of critical experience without pay and to nationalize all productive capacity and resources within the United States for distribution domestically and abroad. That gives the government basically the power to take anything it wants from anyone at any time for any reason that it invents. We also know that guns in the hands of individuals present the greatest threat to tyrants. And they know it. Restriction of private gun ownership is of prime importance to the proponents of Agenda 21. The UN has made multiple attempts to pass international gun control treaties, a concept that is publicly supported by Hillary Clinton, our Secretary of State. In theory, any treaty, if ratified by the Senate, even if it is ratified by the Senate, it cannot restrict or eliminate any right guaranteed us to the by the Constitution. Nevertheless, such a treaty, if ratified by the Senate, would encourage gun control advocates to renew their attempts to legislate gun restrictions. The resulting litigation could give activist federal judges another opportunity to destroy our Second Amendment protections. It is my belief and fear that private gun ownership, the ownership of guns, and the proficiency in their use may eventually be our only salvation. The Agenda 21 plan is to herd citizens into tax subsidized, government controlled, mixed use developments called human settlements, where public services such as health care, drinking water, food, and energy resources will be rationed and freedom of mobility will be heavily restricted. For example, the Smart Growth Plan for Richland County, South Carolina, distinguishes between employment-based villages, non-employment-based place, non-employment-based villages, and they have special gated communities set aside for wealthy individuals who are responsible for the overall plan. The proponents of Agenda 21 are also very clear about their intentions to reduce Earth's population to their ideal number, 500 million people. That means about 6 billion of us will have to go. 
I don't think we'll have any volunteers in the room. And that's exactly what will happen because in these cities that they envision, they have such a high population density with restricted mobility, rationing of essential services, such as food, water, and health care. In these restricted and harsh living conditions, the human population will quickly be decimated by starvation, violence, and disease. Welcome to George Orwell's 1984. He only missed the date by 28 years. We have an executive branch that rules by decree. A cabal of bureaucrats that are issuing regulations at a fever clip, an electronic invasion of privacy that ignores all constitutionality, a media that skews the rhetoric of the ruling elite, endless war and constant crisis, increasing control over every aspect of human endeavor. And even worse, we have a Congress that is filled with political hacks who lack the courage to demand an end to this unconstitutional tyranny of the global elite. Above it all is Agenda 21, the puppet masters of Earth, using the United Nations to establish a one world order to rule and enslave humanity. I believe that Agenda 21 is therefore the single greatest threat to our individual freedom. Our constitutional republic, as it was originally conceived, gave ultimate power to a moral and honest citizenry. Federal power was strictly limited to the powers enumerated in Article 1, Section 8. Agenda 21 turns all this upside down to the detriment of our national sovereignty and our personal freedom. We have heard these arguments before, always from the mouths of those who claim to act for the benefit of mankind, out of the selfless disregard for their own well-being. They say it's for your own good, or it's for the good of all, and they are so smart and know so much that they believe we should all be grateful for the opportunity to allow them to control our lives. Meanwhile, they intend to be personally exempt from any such, such plan. Their do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do mentality and attitude characterizes the elitist ideology. The power elite know that the goals of Agenda 21 are unconstitutional. They're destructive to the Judeo-Christian principles on which this country was founded. And you know what? Most of us but know in our basic instincts that what they want to do is just plain wrong. So to find Agenda 21, we must learn to identify the buzzwords that they use to hide their goals. It's a dire threat. The crisis is always a dire threat to public safety, to the environment, to our health, or to our national security. Action must be taken quickly before it's too late. We must bypass the usual legislative process because it's too cumbersome and too slow. Smart growth is economic activity that is tightly controlled by government laws, rules, and regulations instead of allowing economic success and failure to be determined by the free market principles that made our nation the most prosperous on earth. The government guarantee of equal outcomes instead of equal opportunity demeans and undermines the well-being of those who have achieved success through self-reliance and independent action. When the stark choice of slavery or freedom presented itself to Patrick Henry, his proclamation, give me liberty or give me death, served as a rallying cry for American patriots. Our founders answered that call by being willing to risk life, liberty, and property for freedom. At this decisive crossroad in our nation's history on these matters of principle, compromise is no longer an option. As a patriot, and as you being patriots, our choices should be crystal clear. And so I ask you, each of you, what are you willing to risk for freedom?
I want to thank you very much for your attention. Three years ago, if you were talking about this, people would come out and put a tin hat on your head. Agenda 21 is real. It's here. It's here in North Carolina, in the Triangle, in Asheville, in Charlotte. Eminent domain abuse, forced annexation. People who want regional control, non-governmental organizations, in which the government of multiple, multiple counties gets together and forms a board which then makes rules and laws that we all have to obey, but we have no control over anything. It's essential that we fight this, or else we will be enslaved. Thank you very much.